You're watching 11 Alive Morning News. 11 minutes of nonstop news begins with breaking news. And we are kicking off your 11 minutes of nonstop news with a breaking update and a shooting investigation. We are learning more about the five victims now in the hospital. Police have been working the scene for hours. Molly Oak is there live with the latest. Molly. And police are still on the hunt for the suspects. They say five people were shot here early this morning. They say it happened around 2 a.m. just off of Thomasville Boulevard. Police say they learned five people have been shot, but most have already privately transported themselves to the hospital. They say one individual is in their teens and is in critical condition. The others are being treated for their injuries. We know two of the victims are at Grady and three are at AMC. And police say the ages range from 13 all the way to 42 years old. Police say people were hanging out in front of the the apartment and say some victims live here but are not sure if all of them do. They say there were multiple shooters and it is a massive crime scene. Police are speaking to witnesses right now and say they still need to go back to the hospital, one to check on the victims, but also to speak with them to get more information as they continue to search for the suspects. Back to you all. All right, Molly, thank you. A bizarre investigation happening in Atlanta. Police say a man was shot in the chest with a crossbow. It happened at the pick and pay on Donnelly Hollowell Parkway. Investigators say a gold minivan pulled up to the store. Somebody got out and shot the man on Saturday night. Police are still trying to figure out what led to that attack. Clayton County parents are reacting to the district's decision to only allow clear backpacks. District officials announced that new safety measure last week after banning book bags altogether and lockers at the end of last school year. Some parents we talked to say they don't believe this is going to make a difference. I don't know if that was to make us feel better, but I just I thought it was the stupidest thing I've ever heard. Alicia Taylor tells us she is open to any suggestions that will help keep her two daughters safe in school. Now to a heads up that could save you an expensive speeding ticket. Police are going all out to try to catch speeders. Operation Slowdown is underway across Georgia and several neighboring states. Law enforcement says it's to keep the roads safer for you. From 2019 to 2020, Georgia saw a 46% increase in traffic deaths caused by speeding. You will be saving more money at the gas pump as we get closer to under $4 a gallon. New numbers show that the state average per gallon sits at 404. That's 15 cents less than a week ago. Right now, Atlanta has some of the state's most expensive gas. So if you're in that area, you may want to drive around. That was look at your top headlines on a Monday morning. Here we go, Chelsea, 651, gorgeous shot behind you. Yeah. There it is. Yeah, plenty of sunshine around. Break out those shades. Look cool as you're driving into work. Well, you're going to need them at least to block it out, right? Just to block it out. But it's a beautiful sky that we have out there, and that's the way it's going to stay at least through the early half of the day. Once we get to the afternoon, that's where we could see some of those scattered showers popping up on us. Nothing out there right now. As a matter of fact, uh, a few clouds back off to the west of us, and we've been tracking some showers and some thunderstorms uh, over toward the west of us as well, but I don't think they'll get in here. Uh, we'll see the diurnal type uh, pop up, those pop up thunderstorms. That's what we'll see. Four Central Times of the Day shows temperatures starting off in the 70s. We'll hit 86 by noon. 91 will be our afternoon high temperature. When you factor in the humidity with that, it's going to feel like the upper 90s out there. So, yes, yeah, shorts, short sleeves are doable for today. Uh, 88 degrees by 7 o'clock as a few of those showers will linger. Here's the line I was telling you about. You can see it falling apart as it moves over toward the to the west to the east now there's a front associated with it it's stationary now and so it's just going to drift down to the south in fact i don't even think it makes it into our area I would love for it to because that would uh, clear us out just a little bit you see the southerly flow out ahead of this uh, system off to the west of us and so uh, with that southerly flow a lot of the moisture coming in with the daytime heating we'll be seeing those scattered showers thunderstorms pop up now it's just a general threat over us it's back off to our west that we'll have the threat for severe weather they're over toward uh, northern parts of mississippi alabama central portions of mississippi as well and again that's a level one threat this pattern not changing all week long. We're going to be stuck with the chances for the rain, mainly during the afternoons. It lowers a little bit as we head toward the end of the week. In fact, the weekend even down to a 20% chance, but the temperature will start to go back up. So you got to take the good with the bad, right? Forecast track model shows fair skies this morning. We'll hold on to that at least through about noon. It's after about 2 o'clock that we'll start to see these isolated showers beginning to pop up. A few embedded thunderstorms will be in a few of those as well. And again, that will be around at least through about 7, 8 o'clock tonight. We'll do it all over again for tomorrow, even though we'll start off with a few more clouds in the area, which will help to keep our temperature down, but we'll have a good uh, chance for scattered showers, thunderstorms during the day on Tuesday and through the afternoon. We'll do it
it again on Wednesday. Again, the pattern not changing much at all. 88 for your high temperature by Tuesday. Back up to around 90 degrees for t uh, Wednesday and Thursday. That's where we should be for this time of year. Then really going up as the percentage for rain goes down as we head into the weekend. A new report details more failures with the response to the school shooting in Uvalde, Texas. And the Today Show will be going more in depth on the findings. Sam Brock joins us with a preview. I'm Sam Brock in Uvalde, Texas, where a 77 page document detailing the worst school shooting in Texas history goes way beyond just law enforcement to what happened with Wi-Fi connectivity, delaying lockdown alerts to teachers, three doors at the exterior of the building unlocked, presence on social media that was so threatening to users, that the shooter was known as the school shooter a year in advance of the massacre. And yes, the law enforcement response, nearly 400 officers on scene throughout the course of a chaotic nearly hour and a half, more than half of them state and federal officers who are now feeling the heat of culpability as well from the state and its report. We're going to get into all of that, plus new body camera video from inside the school hallways that shows what officers were and were not trying to do. Heroism also exemplified trying to pull kids out of windows and even a conversation at the shooter's house. All of that coming up on today. Three people are dead after a mass shooting at an Indiana mall. According to Gun Violence Archive, this makes more than 350 shootings this year. It happened in Greenwood. That's about 15 miles south of Indianapolis. People inside the Greenwood Mall say they heard gunshots, about 20 shots coming from the food court area. Police say a good Samaritan who witnessed the shooting killed the suspected gunman. No details have been released on the identity of that gunman. The Today Show team is following new developments on this shooting and will bring you the very latest coming up. Now to a live look at the U.S. Capitol. Today, Georgia Congressman Hank Johnson will join Democratic lawmakers from across the country calling for an expansion to the Supreme Court. They want to add four new seats, which would bring the total to 13 justices. This morning, we are anticipating a judge's decision on whether Georgia's abortion law can take effect. Ariana Manise walks us through this process and what the court's ruling could mean for women across our state. Briefs that were submitted on Friday gives us insights into how both sides are defending their case before the 11th Circuit Court of Appeals after the Supreme Court overturned Roe v. Wade. Now, lawyers who are representing a state and their lawyers to the court, they're arguing that plaintiffs challenging the law do not have a case following the Supreme Court's decision in Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health. And lawyers representing reproductive groups are acknowledging that the Supreme Court's ruling does clear the way for Georgia's abortion law, but shifted their focus to the personhood provision. The measure gives a fetus legal rights and allows parents to claim a fetus on state taxes. Lawyers are arguing this provision is unconstitutionally vague and should remain blocked. Meanwhile, as far as the timeline, judges could rule on this matter as early as this week. Back to you. COVID numbers are going up, and if you work for a Gwinnett County, grab that mask this morning following a recent surge. They are also asking you to wear your mask in county buildings, although if you're visiting, it's not required. And it is not the only one making changes. Douglas County now requires masks in its courthouse for everyone. The latest available numbers show COVID cases in the metro are up nearly 30% in the last two weeks. We'll take you out live now to Hartsfield Jackson International Airport, where we are in the heart of summer travel. It's been rough, right? But compared to others, Atlanta's airport has been running pretty smoothly. A new flight aware analysis shows airports in New York have had the most cancellations, while Chicago Midway, Orlando International and JFK had the most delays this summer. Travelers are warning about another headache. Lost luggage, according to most recent travel consumer reports, in April nearly 220,000 bags were lost or damaged in the U.S. If you are worried about losing your bag, experts say consider putting a small tracking device in there and take a picture of the valuables you have inside. Most importantly, know that the airlines are required to pay you if they do lose your luggage. The Mega Millions jackpot is up to more than half a billion dollars this morning. The drawing for the $530 million jackpot is tomorrow night. Now, this is the eighth largest jackpot in the history of the Mega Millions. Good luck to everyone playing.
<laughs> All right, well, uh, we got plenty of sunshine starting off this morning, and we're going to hold on to it at least through noon. Mostly sunny skies will be the call. 86 will be our temperature by then. By 3 o'clock, though, there could be some scattered shower showers, thunderstorms around. We'll give it a 40% chance. Temperatures right at 90 degrees. We'll get up to 91, and then drop back down to about 89 degrees by 6 o'clock with those scattered showers, thunderstorms lingering in the area. All right, we are cheering on Atlanta Braves outfielder Ronald Acuna Jr. The Braves star is getting ready for the Major League Baseball home run derby. It's today at the LA Dodgers Stadium. Acuna is first up against New York Mets star Pete Alonzo. Now Alonzo won in 2021 and 2019, so that's going to be tough, but he can do it. He can do it. Yeah. He can do it. Hurt last year. He can do it this year. Yeah. He's back. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He's back big. Are we not mentioning Ben Affleck and J-Lo got married over the weekend? Oh my gosh, I was just reading it on Twitter. <laughs> I'm so excited. They went, went to the Little White Chapel. It was inexpensive. It was great. Benifer's official. This is like number 15. Uh,